Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India All right, so welcome back to this uh, last in the series of lectures on spatial statistics and spatial econometrics. Uh, we are going to today look at, uh, you know, the Lagrange multiplier test for spatial dependence in regression models. It's a short lecture on, uh, you know, uh, 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 hypothesis testing in spatial regression models. Uh, this is just an introduction. Uh, the idea of this lecture will be to ramp you up in order to, 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 to learn about hypothesis testing and regression models or rather spatial regression models, but in no way this lecture is going to be exhaustive in doing that, okay. So, uh, but having gone through this lecture will then sort of enable you to uh, study these concepts elsewhere uh, in, in detail. Okay, so of course, you know, we are going to look at the two models that we have seen in detail, that is the spatial lag model and the spatial uh, error model. And if you remember, the spatial lag model looked like this. So we had y equals rho wy plus u and the spatial error model was y equals, uh, sorry, I missed something here. So in this spatial error model, I had this x beta, right? plus u and uh, in the spatial error model, I'll have y equals x beta plus u such that u is equal to lambda w u plus e, where e is multivariate normal with zero mean and a homoscedastic variance covariance structure, right? So we've seen these things in detail by now. Now, we can just revise this very quickly. So let's look at the spatial lag model. So we have y, y is a n by one vector, which is just data of, you know, delineated by space or locations. W is a weights matrix, uh, 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 a very precise, uh, or let's say a concise container for spatial relationships between the units of analyses, right? So W is a n by n matrix, Y is again n by 1. So all I'm looking at is a n by 1 matrix. We have defined this as YL, which is the spatial lag notion of, uh, you know, modeling spatial processes just parallel to the time lag, right? X is an n by k matrix of k covariates and beta is a k by 1 vector of coefficients. U again is an n by 1 random term, error term comprises of everything that we could not model, uh, you know, uh, in this, in this uh, quest for measuring or explaining the variation in Y. The special, the spatial error model is slightly different. Instead of including the, you know, spatial effects in the mean outcome uh, model, it includes uh, such effects in the error process. And last, you know, in the last uh, or couple of lectures ago, we saw that, you know, such models make sense when you have a spatial mismatch between the underlying population process and the data generating process. So if you are studying land use change, uh, but the, you know, which is a more high resolution process happening at farm levels and we are, but what we are doing, but when we get data, if those data are at district level, uh, then we are going to have a error term misspecification in the sense that we are, uh, you know, fundamentally misspecifying or misrepresenting the population process and that enters the random error term, right, which we can then specify as a spatial error model. Um, what is the, what is the aim for hypothesis testing? The hypothesis testing wants to figure out whether it makes any sense to include these spatial effects in the models? Or can we just live with the non-spatial models that we are very used to, you know, even before we studied this, uh, this particular course, right? And that will depend on whether or not 
rho is equal to if rho equals 0 then you know I'm done I don't really need to worry about all the weights matrix and all the you know uh, computation and all the techniques that I need to sort of you know uh, uh, imbibe for for conducting spatial regressions but if rho is not equal to 0 then I can't run away from this situation similarly here if lambda is equal to 0 you know I can go back and uh, to my you know traditional analysis something that I know of regressions before even I studied spatial regressions or spatial statistics right and if it's non-zero then everything that we have studied in this course kicks into action and that will lend us our null hypothesis and our you know alternate hypothesis for this particular exercise and the test that we are going to use is going to be a Lagrange multiplier test so let's dive right into it and figure out uh, you know what the uh, what is the uh, aim of doing all this and what are the statistics that we are going to use right so I'm going to start with the spatial error model okay okay so I have y equals x beta plus u such that u equals lambda w u plus e where e is multivariate standard normal okay not standard normal multivariate normal with mean 0 and variance sigma squared and variance covariances the covariances between uh, the e errors are 0 right uh, of course now my null hypothesis is that lambda equals 0 and my alternate hypothesis is that lambda is not equal to 0 if I reject my null hypothesis then I can just say you know I can work with traditional tools I don't need all this spatial regressions right so the test statistic the Lagrange multiplier test statistic LME is given as u prime w u divided by s squared s squared is just you know a uh, 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 sample variance right so uh, s squared the whole squared divided by t right this is distributed chi squared with degrees of freedom one degree of freedom okay it's distributed chi squared with one degree of freedom okay now s squared is nothing but u prime u by n and t is a trace of w plus w prime dot product with w so now let's look at what are we really writing here right it's a lot of notation now what's up with the lagrange multiplier statistics so this numerator this u prime is 1 by n this is n by n w is n by n and this is one n by one so i am looking at a scalar one by one the scalar one by one is divided by s squared s squared is nothing but u prime u so again one by n n by one i have a scalar sitting here this u prime u can also be seen as summation i u i squared so it's the sum of squared errors divided by n which is nothing but the sample variance but this sample variance s squared is as if there is no spatial weights okay so the numerator here is looking at the sample variance modification when we have spatial weights versus when we do not have spatial weights this numerator is then uh, you know a, a, a square of it is then normalized by this factor t you can think of it as a normalizing coefficient and this is a function of the weights matrix so now I have a weights matrix n by n it's transpose n by n you multiply it by n by n I have a square matrix of n by n the trace of a square matrix is just the sum of its diagonal elements okay so whatever matrix that I, 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 I get here I will sum all the diagonal elements and I will then normalize so I, I have a you know the trace by itself is a scalar because it's the sum of all diagonal elements so I have a scalar sitting in the denominator I have all scalars and if because 
ultimately here I'm comparing the variation or the variance in presence of weights and in absence of weights, the appropriate test statistic is a chi-squared statistic. If you have studied statistical inference before, you will know that if I, even if you, you are comparing the variances of two different samples, you use a chi-squared statistic. Okay, so Lagrange multiplier statistic is a very natural uh, statistic to study or test the hypothesis that whether, you know, uh, lambda is equal to zero or not equal to zero. Okay, so of course, you know, what I need is a test decision. What is a test decision? Well, if LME is greater than chi squared 1.95, so we, we say we reject the null hypothesis at 95% confidence. And if LME is less than or equal to chi squared 1.95, then you say you fail to reject, uh, you know, null hypothesis at 95%. So if you fail to reject the null hypothesis, then you may not want to specify a spatial error model. But if you reject it, then the spatial error model is indeed the right specification. If you ignore it then, then you are going to have inefficient estimates, okay? You are going to have larger errors in your beta hats than you would have ideally wanted, okay? So if you reject the null, right? That means lambda is indeed going to be less than, not equal to zero and is likely to be not equal to zero with a very high probability and so probably you should apply a feasible generalized least squared model. But if you fail to reject the null hypothesis, then you can live with OLS, you're fine. So that's what this null, you know, test hypothesis testing exercise is telling you. Okay, so I'm going to do a similar thing for spatial lag models. Let me do that for spatial lag model. We'll quickly write it down, y equals rho wy plus x beta plus u and now my null hypothesis is either rho is equal to zero, rho is not equal to zero, much more, you know, natural. Just like earlier, I'm going to define a test statistic. This time I'm going to call it LML, that is the lag. This is going to be u prime w u, oh, now u this time, it's going to be u prime w y because now I'm explaining the variation in the mean outcome and not in the error outcome. This divided by again s squared, whole square divided by a normalizing constant n j. This is again going to be chi squared one, that is chi squared distributed with one degree of freedom, right? And S squared, just like earlier, is just U prime U over N, right? And NJ is equal to T plus WX beta prime M WX beta divided by S squared, where T is equal to the trace of the same matrix that we are used to by now, right? And M is a projection matrix, I minus X prime, X prime, X inverse, X prime, sorry, I have uh, this typo here, I needed, okay, I'm gonna rewrite this, M equals I minus X, X prime, X inverse, X prime, and then close the bracket, okay? This is a projection matrix. The idea is the same. Now the, 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 the expression is a bit more complicated, but the idea is exactly the same that we have seen earlier, okay? And of course, what we are interested in is the test decision. That is, if LML is greater than chi squared one at 0.95, this can be sourced from a chi squared table, then we will reject the null at 0.95, uh, sorry, 95% confidence. 
okay and if lml is less than or equal to a chi squared 1 at 0.95 which again will be sourced from the table we will fail to reject the null at a high confidence of 95 percent okay now if you reject the null then you cannot avoid a spatial lag model that is indeed the right specification and if you reject the null and you still go on to ignoring if you go on to ignoring this rho w y factor then all the beta hats are going to be biased and higher the rho the greater is the degree of bias something that we saw through a, a simulated plot by Luke and Selin earlier right and and if you fail to reject the null then you can go back to your OLS just like we talked about in the previous case okay so ultimately we are we are also often interested in choosing between these uh, you know most appropriate specifications so this is the starting point right if I am interested in choosing between whether I should run a spatial error model or a spatial lag model then the starting point is to first figure out whether figure out whether individually they make sense if say both individually make sense then probably we should go back and look at a likelihood ratio test something that I'm not going to talk about here but you know basically what you're saying is saying is I'm trying to maximize lack likelihood in, 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 in estimating the spatial lag in estimating the spatial error I want to see which fits my data better okay so we have to apply you know again as I said this module on hypothesis testing is a very basic introduction it does not do justice to hypothesis testing in spatial regression models at all but it's a ramping up exercise you know it's trying to I'm trying to empower you in order to now go back and read the book and you know uh, 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 figure out uh, how to conduct uh, you know hypothesis testing in various different settings of uh, you know uh, with spatial regression models okay so uh, with that I'm going to end the lecture modules of spatial statistics and spatial econometrics Going forward, we are going to move to tutorials that is hands on exercises with ArcGIS and R, right? So I want to congratulate you for making this far and the rest of this course is all uh, your software -ridden, uh, driven and it uh, is basically working with actual data and applying all these theories that we have been learning over the course of last, uh, you know, almost 10 weeks now, okay? Uh, so thank you very much uh, for your attention and I'll see you on the other end with the hands-on exercises. Thank you.